today i will discuss with you confined space related requirements and uh, i hope after this training you don't need to require any other training related to confined space so all the information which you read regarding confined space that all the information i will provide in this training and this training is designed according to the requirements of 29 cfr which is a code of federal regulation 1910-146 which is the osha requirement okay so all the information regarding confined space the hazards definitions and all other things that i will provide in this training before i move to the next level please do not forget to subscribe my channel and like my videos and please do share with your friends and colleagues also and please subscribe if you haven't for more information and more content in the future thank you so much for your love and support so let's start our training confined space so what are the objectives of this training why we are doing this training what is the reason first of all define a confined space definition we will go what is the definition of confined space we will define a permit required in confined space what are the permits that we need in the confined space we need to be familiar with the osha standard and the basic elements of the standards understand the hazards associated with the confined spaces and how to detect them understand how to control confined hazards confined space hazards and understand personal protective equipment that we need in confined space so all these things we are gonna look okay and these are those are the these are the objectives of our training so confined space definition what is the meaning of confined space there are different different definition if you will uh, check as per the hse there is a different requirement uh, requirements and different definitions and if you will check as per the uh, requ uh, definition as per the osha there is a different one and other countries they have the different definitions but the meaning is same so we can say that a confined space means a space that is large enough so configured and an employee can bodily enter and perform assigned work has a limited or restricted means for entry or exit okay there are limited access for the entry or exit for example tanks vessels silos pits vaults and hoopers and is not designed for continuous employee occupancy and confined space it is not designed for the continuous work okay it's not like that every day you have to work and continuously eight hours the people they have to work in the confined space it is a short term work and sometimes only you have to work in that space that is a confined space if you are continuously working in that particular space like continuous eight hours and every day you are working that is not a confined space then that is a normal work space okay permit required what kind of permit do we need for the confined space confined space definition says that a permit required confined space means a confined space that has a one or more of the following characteristic contains or has a potential to contain a hazardous atmosphere that is a definition of the confined space also and contains a material that has the potential for engulfing and enter entrance permit required a permit required confined space means a confined space that has one or more of the following characteristics has an internal configuration such that an entrant could be trapped or asphyxiated by inwardly converging walls or by a floor which slopes downwards and tapers to a smaller cross sections contains any other serious safety or health hazards so that is a confined space and there we need the permit work so these are the some images of confined space you can see here okay so all of these are confined space characteristics of confined spaces internal configuration first it is open there are no obstacles barriers or obstructions within the space one example is a water tank obstructed okay there are different type of uh, this confined spaces one is open one the second one obstructed the permitted space contains some types of construction that a rescuer would need to maneuver around 
An example would be a baffle or mixing blade. Okay, the mixing blade. Large equipment such as ladder or scaffold brought into a space for work purpose would be considered an obstruction if the positioning or size of the equipment would make rescue more difficult. Suppose uh, people they are walking uh, inside the gutter or uh, big uh, waste recycling that uh, pipe or big uh, waste pipe. So inside that one, if you have to go enter or you have to walk on those big things, you need to get the ladder inside or you need the scaffold. If you are placing any scaffold or ladder inside any space, confined space, that itself we can call obstruction also because during the emergency, if you have to evacuate, that will uh, give you the like some kind of hindrance and it will obstruct your way for exit. Elevation, elevated, a permitted space where the entrance portal or opening is above grade by 4 feet or more. This type of space usually requires knowledge of high angle rescue processors because of the difficulty in packaging and transporting a patient to the ground from the portal. If you are working in a, any elevated confined space, uh, maybe above the ground level more than 4 feet, this type of space user requires knowledge of high angle rescue processes. So, if any worker is working in elevated confined space. Sorry. Non-elevated confined space. A permit space with the entrance portal located less than 4 feet above grade. This type of space will allow the rescue team to transport and injure employee normally. This is the non-elevated one. Third one, we have the portal size, the restricted. A portal of 24 inches or less in the least dimension. Portals of the size are too small to allow a rescuer to simply enter the space while using SCBA, self-containing breathing aspirators. Portal size is also too small to allow normal spinal immobilization of an injured employee. So, restricted area also, okay, where the people can't enter easily and you can't rescue any person from that particular space. That's called the restricted area space. Unrestricted one, a portal of greater than 24 inches. Any portal that has the space greater than 24 inches, the entrance space, in the least dimension, these portals allow relatively free movement into and out of the permit space. Space access, how we can access into the space. First, horizontal. The portal is located on the side of the permit space. Use of retrieval lines could be difficult. E, vertical. The portal is located on the top of the permit space so that the rescuer must climb down or the bottom of the permit space so that rescuers must climb up to enter the space. Vertical portals may require knowledge of rope techniques or a special patient packaging to safety retrieve or down entrant. So that is the spaces. So these are the characteristics of confined spaces. Now 29 CFR 1910 46 146 permit required confined space. So permit required confined spaces scope and application. The definition should be there. General requirements to include development of written plan and permit required confined space, permit system, entry permit, training, duties of authorized entrants. What are the duties? Who are the authorized entrants? Duties of attendants and duties of entry supervisors, rescue and emergency services, employee participation. So these are the things should be included in your permit to work systems or any from a confined space uh, SOP or operating procedure if you have SOP you have safe standard operating procedure in that one you have to mention at least all these information as per OSHA's requirement. Appendix, appendix A, permit required confined space decision flow chart appendix B procedure for atmosphere testing okay these are the appendix will be there A, B, C, D, E, F, sewer system entry confined space pre-entry checklist rescue team or rescue service Evaluation criteria. Definition. Acceptable entry condition means that condition that must exist in a permit space to allow entry and to ensure that employees involved with a permit required 
confined space and we can safely enter into and work within the space. That is an acceptable entry conditions. People should enter easily and without any injury and they can work there within the space without any issues or without any hazard or any safety risk, health and safety risk. Attendant, what is the meaning of attendant? Attendant means an individual is stationed outside one or more permit spaces who monitors the authorized entrance and performs all attendance duties assigned in the employee's permit space program. There will be the, there will be the attendance. Attendant means the person, they will remain outside the confined space and they will uh, monitor the entrance who is entering inside the confined space. They will perform all the duties which is assigned by a permit to work system. In case of attendance, what are the duties of attendance? Know the hazards that may be faced during entry. Is aware of possible behavioral effects of hazard exposure in authorized entrance. Continuously maintains an accurate count of authorized entrance inside the confined space. Remain outside the permit space during entry operation until relieved by another attendant. So, if you are hiring any attendant outside the confined space, you have to make sure that that attendant should remain there always until the work uh, has not been finished inside the confined space. If the person has to move from there, another person should replace there. Okay, replacement you have to get also. Communicates with authorized entrance, monitor activities inside and outside the space. Summons, rescue and other emergency services performs non-entry rescue as specified by the employer rescue procedure. Performs no duties that might interfere with the attendant's primary duty to monitor and protect the authorized entrance. So these are the duties and responsibilities of uh, attendance. Authorized entrant means an employee who is authorized by the employer to enter a permit to a space. Inside the confined space, everyone is not allowed to enter. Person who is allowed to enter by the training, by the experience, by the knowledge, okay. So by all these things, your employer, they will allow you, give the authorization to enter. So those person who has the authorization to enter, we are calling that authorized entrant. Duties of authorized entrance. What are the duties of authorized entrance who is entering inside the confined space? Know the hazards that may be faced during entry, including information on the mode, signs or symptoms and consequences of the exposures. Properly use equipment as required by paragraph B4 of this section. Communicate with the attendant as necessary to enable the attendant to monitor entrant status and to, sorry, and to enable the attendant to alert entrants of the need to evacuate the space as required by paragraph I6 of this section. Continued uh, duties of authorized entrants alert the attendant whenever the entrant recognizes any warning signs uh, and symptoms of exposure to a dangerous situations or the Entrant detects a prohibited conditions and exit from the permit space as quickly as possible whenever. An order to evacuate is given by the attendant or the entry supervisor. The entrant recognizes any warning sign on symptoms of exposure to a dangerous situation. The entrant detects a prohibited conditions or an evacuation alarm is activated. So these are the roles and responsibilities of entrant. Authorized entrant. Okay, emergency, what is the meaning of emergency in confined space? Emergency means any occurrence, including any failure of hazard control or monitoring equipment or even internal or external to the permit space that could endanger entrance. So that is the emergency. Engulfment. Engulfment, Engulfment means the surrounding and effective capture of a person by a liquid or finally divided global solid substance that can be aspirated to cause that by filling or plugging the respiratory system or that can exert enough force on the body to cause that by strangulation, construction or crushing. So that is the 
definition of engulfment. Entry. Entry means the actions by which a person passes through an opening into a permit required confined space. Entry includes ensuring work activities in that space and is considered to have occurred as soon as any part of the entrance body breaks the plan of opening into the space. So that is the definition of entry. Now the definition of entry permit. What is the entry permit? Entry permit means a written or printed document that is provided by the employee to allow and control entry into the permit space, confined, uh, confined space and that contains the information specified in section F of the, the standard. So that is an entry permit. Entry supervisor means the person such as an employee, foreman or CREO responsible for determining if acceptable entry conditions are present at a permit space where entry is planned for authorizing entry and overseeing any operation, entry operations and for terminating entry as required by this section. So that is an entry supervisor. Duties of entry supervisor. The duties of entry supervisors are know the hazards that may be faced during entry, including information on the mode, signs, or symptoms and consequences of the exposure. Verifies by the checking that is appropriate entries have been made on the permit, that all tests specified by the permit have been conducted, and that all procedures and equipment specified by the permit are in place before endorsing the permit and allowing entry to begin. So that is the duty of entry supervisor. Terminates the entry and cancel the permit as required by paragraph E5 or this section. Verifies that rescue services are available and that the means of summoning them are operable. Removes unauthorized individuals who enter or who attempt to enter the permit. Determines whenever the responsibility of a permit space entry operation is transferred and it and at intervals dictated by the hazards and operation performed within the space. That the entry operations remain consistent with terms of entry permit and that acceptable entry conditions are maintained. So that is the roles and responsibility of a supervisor, entry supervisor. What is hazardous atmosphere? What is the meaning of hazardous atmosphere? Hazardous atmosphere meaning an atmosphere that may expose employees to the risk of death in capacitation, impairment of ability to self-rescue, that is escape unaided from a permit space injury, acute illness from one or more of the following causes. Flammable gas, vapor or mist in excess of 10% of its lower flammable limit. Hazardous atmosphere continued. Airborne combustible dust is a concentration that meets or exceeds its lower flammable limit. This concentration may be approximated as a condition in which the dust obscures vision at a distance of 5 feet or less. Atmospheric oxygen concentration below 19.5% or above 23.5%. That is the oxygen requirement. Atmospheric concentration of substance for which a dose or a permissible exposure limit is published in subpart G, Occupational Health and Environmental Control, or in subpart Z, toxic and hazardous substances of this part, and which could result in employee exposure in excess of its dose permissible exposure limit. So these are the definitions of hazardous atmospheres. So all these things are present so that we can. 1% or 2 things are present, 3, 4 persons. So we can say that yes, it is a hazardous atmosphere. It's not like that, all should be present at a time. Now, the hot work permit, what is the hot work permit? Hot work permit means the employee's written authorization to perform operation, for example, driving, welding, cut, welding, cutting, burning, etc. That comes under the hot work permit. Immediately dangerous to the life and health means any condition that causes an immediate or delayed threat to life or that would cause irreversible adverse health effects or that would interfere with an individual's ability to escape unaided from a permit space. So that is a immediately dangerous to life and health definition.
Inerting means the displacement of the atmosphere in a bomb made space by a non combustible gas such as nitrogen to such an extent that a resulting atmosphere is non combustible. Insulation means isolating with a permit space is removed from the surface and completely protected against the release of energy or any hazardous material. That's isolation. Line breaking means the intentional opening of a pipe, line, or duct that is sorry, or duct that is or that is or has been carrying flammable, corrosive, or toxic material and inert gas or any fluid at a volume, pressure, or temperature capable of causing injury. So that is the line breaking. Line breaking means intentionally, if anyone is opening of these pipes and gases, so that is a line breaking. Non-permit confined space means a confined space that does not contain or with respect to atmospheric hazards have the potential to contain any hazard capable of causing death or serious physical harm. So, this is the definition of non permit confined space. The definition of oxygen deficient or atmosphere means an atmosphere containing less than 19.5% of oxygen by volume that is an oxygen deficient, we are calling. Sometimes people uh, feel suffocated. Whenever the oxygen level will go down 19.5%, that call oxygen deficient. Okay. Then we have the oxygen enriched atmosphere means. If any atmosphere, the oxygen level is 23.5% above, so that atmosphere we are calling oxygen enriched atmosphere. Permit required confined space program means the employee's overall program to maintain the hazard and risk inside the confined space where any work are not allowed to perform without any permit. So that call permit space program. LRC is written permit required confined space written plan okay, and what should be there in your plan confined space um, introduction company policy definition should be there identification of confined spaces which are the spaces you are identifying and you are classifying as a confined space that should be there notification and warning what are the notification you will give and the warnings will be there hazard identification equipment for entry and rescue evaluation of confined spaces permits Authorized and authorized entrance and authorized attendance. Entry supervisors, uh, entry procedures, communication procedures, rescue procedures, closer procedures, coordination of work with contractors, program review and update, training requirements and documentation. Ah, permit system. What is the permit system? It means the employees written procedure for preparing and issuing permits for entry and for returning the permit space to service following termination of the entry. So that is a permit system. Permit system is the whole process that will control the work inside the confined space through the permit. permit. What should be there inside the entry permit? Entry permit is space to be entered. The name permit space. Purpose of entry, why you are entering inside the uh, confined space? The date and authorized duration of permit. What is the date? And authorized duration. What are the authorized duration? How long you will remain there inside the confined space? Who are the authorized entrants? Who are allowed? How many people? Authorized attendance. Who will be the attendance outside the confined space? Name and signature of entry supervisor. Hazard of the permit space to be entered. Isolation of hazard control measures should be there. And acceptable entry conditions. What are the acceptable entry conditions? In which conditions you will enter and which condition you will not enter. So those conditions should be properly specified and should be classified acceptable uh, sorry results of initials and periodic atmosphere monitoring what are the results rescue and emergency services what are the rescue and emergency services you have communication procedures how you will communicate with the people equipment required for entry and rescue operations other necessary information and other required permits that should be there and entry permits Definition prohibited condition. What are the prohibited conditions mean? Means any condition in permit space that is not allowed by the permit during the period when entry is authorized. So these are the prohibited conditions. Rescue survey means the personnel designated to rescue employees from permit spaces. Rescue and emergency services. Rescue and emergency services, an employer who designates rescue and emergency services. Pursuant to paragraph D9 of this section shall 
evaluate a prospective rescuer's ability to respond to a rescue summons in a timely manner, considering the hazards identified. Rescue and emergency services. So, in the paragraph K, A, L, and I, what will be considered timely will vary according to the specific hazards involved in each entry. For example, section 1910-134 in CFR Code of, Code of Federal Regulation, Respiratory Protection requires that employees provide a standby person or person capable of immediate action to rescue employees warning respirator protection while in work areas defined as ID LH atmosphere immediately danger okay, in that atmosphere. Evaluate a prospective rescue services ability in terms of proficiency with rescue related tasks and equipment to function appropriately while rescuing entrants from the particular permit space or types of permit space identified. Select a rescue team or services from those uh, evaluated that has the capability to reach the victims within a time frame that is appropriate for the permit space as it's identified and equipped for and proficient in performing the needed rescue services. And inform each rescue team or services of the hazards they may confront when called on to perform rescue at the site. Okay, so these are the requirements that you should have in your emergency and rescue services and how you gonna involve these things that you can decide and you can take the help from these requirements. So these are all rescue and emergency services requirements. The following requirements apply to employees who have employees enter permit system uh, spaces to perform rescue services. Then each member of the rescue services shall practice making permit space rescue at least once every 12 months by means of simulated rescue operations in which they remove domains, man, uh, mankins or actual persons from the actual permit spaces or from representative permit space. Dummies or mannequins you can use or you can use the actual uh, people during the emergency and rescue drill. Retrieval systems means the equipment including a retrieval line, cost, uh, retrieval line, chest or full body harness, wristlets and if appropriate and a lifting device or anchor used for non-entry rescue of persons from permit spaces. Testing means the process by which the hazards that may confront entrants of a permit space are identified and evaluated. Testing include specifying the tests that are to be performed in the permit space. Testing protocol. When you are doing the gas testing or certain other testing, what are the protocols that you have to follow? inside the confined space. Before an employee enters the space, confined space, the internal atmosphere shall be tested with a calibrated direct reading instrument for the following conditions in the order given. First, oxygen contained. What is the level of oxygen inside the confined space? What are the flammable gases and vapors are present inside the confined space? Potential toxic air contaminants. If there is any potential toxic contaminants there are there or not. So that also need to be checked. Sorry. So that's all for this training, confined space part one. So I will stop this training for now. In my next part, we will continue our confined space. The remaining information I will share you in second part, and we will complete this training. So far, I would like to thank you for your time and patience and your support. I hope you like this training and the information which I have shared you. Please keep in mind that these requirements are required by OSHAs. Okay, if you are uh, if you are working already, if you are performing any health and safety job and responsibilities, this information is very crucial and important for you also. And if you are planning to come into the HSC field also and you are studying any NABOSH or any health and safety course, then it is also very, very important for you and very, uh, this information which I'm sharing with you, this information will be very helpful and useful for you 
for your career and for your work also. So thank you so much for your time and patience. See you in the next video.